In today's video, I will be discussing low-dose naltrexone and its many health benefits. If you want to get more information on low-dose naltrexone, I encourage you to check out the LDN book edited by Linda Ellsgood. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Dan Zatarski. I am the owner and pharmacist here at MD Custom RX with my wife Monica and father-in-law John Wachowski. I have bookmarked show notes below. To save you time, instead of watching the entire video, you can jump to the particular ailment that I've bookmarked and you can watch that particular section. Let's get started in today's content. So we could spend all night, I mean there's just, if you go to the LDNResearchTrust.org website, you can just literally search any disease state that you're looking for and there will be all the clinical studies that are either currently ongoing or that have been done in the past. It's a very good resource. We're going to talk about a few of them here. but for cancer therapy. So intermittent dosing with LDN. So somebody with cancer, they could take LDN for a short period of time. And there's a lot of different studies. Some, some studies will take it, have them take it for three weeks, one week off. I've read other studies where they'll take it for two weeks, two weeks on, two weeks off. And there's even more variations on top of that. But for cancer, it seems to be that we're really trying to trick that, that mor morphine receptor, that opioid receptor back and forth, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Um, in, increases cell death, and then also LDN causes an increase in cell sensitivity to chemotherapy agents. So as, again, this is where you really got to be working closely with the oncologist. It's not that you can't, they, they might be very hesitant of having you take LDN, but you can actually see in, in some of these studies where patients are taking less of a chemotherapeutic agent with a lot of side effects by adding a small dose of LDN on board. That's pretty cool. And then that patient's cancer is resolved and they don't have the negative long-term consequences of too much chemotherapy. Cells treated with LDN upregulate genes responsible for cell death. So if you get a solid tissue cancer, essentially soak it in LDN, you can see those cells, those cancer cells dying off. LDN for MS. So MS, the most uh, autoimmune neurodegenerative disease in the US. So about a million patients affected, two and a half million worldwide. Basically, I always think about the electrical system in our house and the plastic sheathing and the insulation around those wires basically is deteriorating, autoimmune related. Basically, the immune system's attacking our own um, covering for our, our nerves. Uh, I always looked at, so contributing factors. So low vitamin D, smoking, Epstein-Barr virus. So if you know someone with MS and they haven't been tested for Epstein-Barr virus, I strongly recommend looking into that, making sure their vitamin D is a, between 40 and 60 uh, nanograms per deciliter. Uh, look at this, strong triggers, gluten again. So if you know of anyone with MS and they might already be on LDN, make sure that they're not consuming gluten. Uh, microbes also can set it off, other dietary choices. Uh, and then there's a lot of environmental factors, pathogens, toxins, uh, it could be endocrine related, sleep imbalance. A lot of studies done with MS. This was just a, a trial for six months, 40 patients. They looked at it for uh, two milligrams for two to four weeks, and then they bumped it up to four milligrams. Uh, first eight weeks, patient symptoms may temporarily worsen. I talked about this earlier with MS. Those patients sometimes will get worse, and that's a good sign. And then after, usually you have to wait till about 12 weeks, about three months out, and then you'll see their symptoms actually dramatically improve. So if, you, if you're a patient with MS and man, this is, this is a drug that's not for me, and you call and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna stop this, or what, what the case may be, I would encourage you to at least have that patient uh, try to at least bear with it for um, 12 weeks at least, if you can. I'm sorry, eight weeks. Uh, typical treatment, this is for Crohn's, steroids and NSAIDs, and there's a lot of side effects with that. I won't get into that tonight. Patients who use biological agents, I have a lot of patients actually here that um, for, that are on LDN, they're getting, and they're actually also on these, some of these biological agents. A lot of them end up res resistant to those agents over time. The mu opioid receptor can be found in the small bowel and colon. So again, this, this opioid receptor that we keep talking about is found all over the GI tract. So LDN is blocking that receptor, and then all of a sudden, okay, those endorphins aren't able to attach to that receptor. We're going to upregulate endorphin production. The LDN is going to go away. It's going to attach to these receptors, and uh, create the improvement in that patient. Uh, this was a study done on kids 
Uh, it was a small study. There were only 14 patients. Uh, this particular researcher dosed it based on body weight. Um, that was the first time I've seen that. But nonetheless, the outcomes were pretty impressive. 25% entered into remission. 67% of those patients had symptom improvement, which is pretty impressive for Crohn's disease. And then that was only an eight-week study. When they moved it out to 12 weeks, they looked at the data. There was a 78% uh, reduction in symptoms. With LDN and fibro, fibromyalgia, we, this is probably one of the main, um, I would say it's outside of Lyme disease. We do a lot of Lyme disease um, prescriptions here. Uh, outside of that, I would say the next category that we see for LDN is, is fibromyalgia. Um, and it's very hard to treat. This autoimmune condition with so many different symptoms. Standard medical care is, is I would say, medium at best. Muscle relaxants, antidepressants, NSAIDs, and so forth. It just it doesn't work very good. Uh, this was, again, a smaller study, but randomized. It was double-blind, placebo-controlled. We like to see that as more value. This was 4.5 milligrams taken for 12 weeks. 28% reduction in symptoms. Again, not great, but if you're one of those patients that's tried everything else, um, it's definitely worth a try, in my opinion. Uh, so fibromyalgia in general. So I always, if, if somebody's dealing with fibromyalgia, I'm trying to stabilize that patient. I'm giving them um, synergistic products. LDN isn't gonna be perfect for these patients to begin with. So I'm looking at things like D-ribose, CoQ10, glutathione. Um, the list goes on from there, N-acetylcysteine, uh, even alpha-lipoic acid, anything to help uh, just stabilize uh, the nervous system, essentially. Uh, hormones can be out of balance. I look at their sex hormones, their cortisol, uh, thyroid. Uh, therapeutic trial of LDN at this point is critical. So if somebody's tried all the antidepressants, NSAIDs, pain relievers, Cymbalta, the list can go on and on, um, and they're still not getting that relief, I, there's, it's worthwhile trying LDN. Thyroid disorders, so when I, LDN's really good for two things in my opinion with thyroid, it's Graves' disease and Hashimoto's. So if you have hypothyroidism just because you have a slow thyroid gland in general, LDN's probably not gonna do that much for you. But if you have Graves' or Hashimoto's, that's, it's a autoimmune disease that affects the endocrine system, then I'd say, okay, then, then take, then try, then try LDN. This says most, if not all, those who suffer from depression, obesity, diabetes, insulin resistance, so on and so forth, uh, have um, some type of immune dis dysfunction that results in low tissue levels of thyroid hormones. So there are so many other contributing factors that can make our thyroid gland sluggish and not work that it needs to do. If you're looking at TSH for your thyroid lab, I always encourage patients to look at more than just TSH. Look at your free T3, your free T4, and you really need to get, focus in on your antibodies. Your TPO antibody is critically important to look at. So if you, you have hypothyroidism, you're on thyroid medication, and you've never had your antibody levels even tested, I would encourage you to have that, test, that level tested. Uh, there's a large number of studies with LDN and, and thyroid. It reduces inflammation, shows ability to improve thyroid hormone transportation into the cell, which is neat. Uh, shows ability to improve T4 to T3 conversion. I talk a lot about this in my thyroid class where LDN, or I'm sorry, there's a lot of patients out there that, that have enough thyroid hormone on board, but they can't convert it. So that, in that particular patient, then LDN would be promising for that. Um, Note for Hashimoto's patients, uh, if you give somebody LDN for Hashimoto's, they can you can turn them into a hypertensive or hyperthyroid crisis. They're gonna produce a lot too much thyroid hormone, so you wanna be monitoring their levels almost every month uh, and then educate them on you know, basically rapid heart rate and um, palpitations and so forth if they're getting too much thyroid hormone. That would be a particular patient where I'd want to titrate them very slowly. Hashimoto's patient comes in, half a milligram, maybe a milligram to start, retest their labs in, uh, in, in four weeks, then bump them up to two milligrams and go really slow with them. LDN and restless leg, I remember when some of these drugs came out 20 years ago and there was these new class of drugs for restless leg syndrome and I was like, do we really need a new drug class of <laughs> medication out there for this? But I don't know if they're popular anymore or yet. Um, so restless leg syndrome, um, you can 
a compelling urge to move extremities. Uh, it can occur during rest. It occurs uh, typically in the evening. Um, and there's a couple of studies that are out there that show that. Um, so pathophysiology pathophysi revolves around the dopamine, I can't say that, dopaminergic dysfunction, altered central nervous system, uh, iron homeostasis, and genetic polymorphisms. But long story short, if you know somebody out there with uh, restless leg syndrome, or you're taking a medication that your doctor prescribed you for restless leg, you may want to consider LDN. Um, this goes, and then so LDN and osteoporosis. So I'm really covering like all the way from cancer to bone health <laughs> to your immune system. Um, and so this is dealing with the opioid receptor of that opioid growth factor receptor that's actually on our osteoblasts. Uh, this was a study that was published a few years ago, and um, they looked at opioid growth factor receptors on these particular bone cells. They only looked at this for 28 days. Results at LDN administered gr uh, group had significant increase in femoral bone mass, bone formation, and osteoblast numbers just in 28 days. So that's pretty impressive. Um, so if you don't think LDN can build bone, I would encourage your doctor to look at this study. Consider, and again, I'm not saying that you know, this is the, it's not an FDA approved use for it, but if I'm that patient and I'm, you know, I'm on Boniva or I'm on some other pharmaceutical and it's not working and my bones aren't growing and so forth, um, I might want to consider you know, taking some LDN instead, or at least having that discussion with your doctor. So here's where I, going back, uh, if you're on pain medication, you can't take LDN. Well, I, again, that was, only part of the story. <laughs> so you can, you can take it at super, super low dose. So going back to that, so like this is 0.2 milligrams or 200 micrograms, super tiny dose. And what that's doing is it's just, just kind of, I would say irritating that receptor a little bit or kind of just modulating it. So it's blocking it, but as it's blocking it, it's making it more receptive to the pain medication, if that makes sense. So it's only, and it's probably blocking it for just an hour or two and telling that receptor to shape up a little bit, and then it allows that, that, that pharmaceutical, that Vicodin, to essentially work better because it attaches to the pain receptor more effectively. So enhances analgesic effect, alleviates tolerance of narcotic pain medication. If you know somebody that's on a high dose of narcotics and you want to try to get, and there's a lot of side effects, there's constipation, there's the, just, you know, you're out of it, you feel like, you know, you're drugged essentially, right? Getting too much uh, pain medication in your system. You can actually give them a small amount of LDN and that'll help lower the amount of pain medication overall that they need. Again, I'll, it's all has to be directed by the provider, of course. Reduce the potential for opioid addiction. Uh, reduces daily dose by as much as 30%, which again, hence reducing side effects. So how cool is that? Um, and there's a doctor uh, in Northern Illinois, Dr. S uh, Sarah Zielsdorf, that she is the expert in my opinion on LDN and pain. Or if you know somebody that's, again, are not on narcotic medication, they want to get off of narcotic pain, narcotic pain medication, she's the gal to go see. So, in my book anyway. LDN, and we can go on and on, but I'm, I know I'm, I'm getting, what time is it? 7.26, so almost an hour. Okay, let me try to wrap up. I got a few more slides. LDN <clears throat> depression. So LDN increases endorphins. We talked about that already, the happy feel-good neurotransmitter. Uh, more research is constantly ongoing with depression and PTSD, anxiety. Uh, this is a great one to combine with CB CBD for depression and kind of those you know, poor mood, anxiety, nervousness, that kind of thing. Uh, LDN and autism, there's Dr. Norman Schwartz in Mequon. I would send you to him if, you're, if you have somebody that, that is autistic or on the spectrum. He's a great resource for us, knows about LDN. Uh, for cancer, we talked about that already. There's Dr. Bahari, this was back in New York. Um, he has just phenomenal response rates with patients that are like, they've tried all the chemotherapy and they just were not successful. And 25% response rate, 25% stabilization, these aren't clinical trials, these are just numbers from him. Uh, you can Google search him, Dr. Biari, uh, New York City, uh, but just a phenomenal physician that's doing a lot with LDN and, and helping to fight cancer. I mean, a lot of these patients aren't given any hope anymore. 
LDN and Zematop. Zematop is just a, a branded uh, topical that we use here for the psoriasis, eczema, any kind of itching. Um, and there's re case reports on, on this particular product. This helps per promote skin healing. You can actually use it for scars too. Helps to uh, thin out keloids from scar tissue. Uh, pancreatic and hepatic cancers. <clears throat> if you know anyone that's taken LDN for pancreatic or, or uh, hepatic cancers, uh, Dr. Bert Berkson always recommends taking 300 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid twice a day. Um, don't know the exact mechanism behind that, but actually this guy right here, it helps with uh, nerve formation, helps to insulate the nerves more effectively. Uh, one of those capsules twice a day. Good add-on therapy. Final take-home point: Low-dose naltrexone enhances our body's own production of endorphins. So if we don't, if we, if our body isn't producing endorphins, if we're not sleeping well, we're not producing enough. LDN's not going to work. So we've got to make sure that that's going on. Um, and then, so other patients have said, "Well, how do you improve besides sleep? How can you improve your L, uh, endorphin production? Take fish oil. Omega-3 fatty acids help to produce endorphins in the body. One more reason to take fish oil." Omega-3 fatty acids. So low-dose naltrexone enhances our production of endorphins, leading to reduced inflammation and enhanced immune system function. And I would say maybe enhance isn't the best word to use there, but it modulates it. And so if somebody has an overactive immune system, kind of that, that autoimmune issue where it's attacking everything, it'll help to bring that autoimmune back in control. But at the same time, if their body's ability to fight infections isn't that great, it can upregulate the immune system at the same time, if need be. If you are interested in starting low-dose naltrexone, I encourage you to talk to your doctor about this very important medication. If your doctor is unsure about low-dose naltrexone, please share this video with them and encourage them to reach out to me and I'll be happy to meet with them either in person or on the phone and I can walk them through how to properly dose low-dose naltrexone for new patients. Don't forget to share this video if you found value in today's content. In next week's video, I will be discussing with you the side effects, dosing tips, and how to maximize low-dose naltrexone if you, can, if you are considering taking this medication. Have a great day.